Assalamualaikum and uh, very good morning. Thank you for the kind introduction. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to present paper entitled Climate Change and Agriculture Impact and Adaptation Strategies and the High Temperature and Water Limited Environment. But before that, just to keep uh, the environment lighter. Everybody seems to be tense. So I have a story. Okay. You look at the earlier speakers, they tend to shy away from the, from the roster. Tonjin, move away from the roster. Maria, move away from the roster. The earlier speaker, uh, that was Sulaiman. Sulaiman was a shy away from the speaker. But I love the roster very much. <laughs> you know why? This rostrum or the rostrum has saved me from total embarrassment. <laughs> many years back, many years back, when I was invited to deliver a keynote address similar to this, I went up the stage and while presenting, I feel something wrong with my pen. <laughs> something wrong. So I looked down, oh my. Oh my god, it's not zip. <laughs> I was lucky the rostrum was so big. Two times bigger than this rostrum. So while presenting, I maneuver myself and managed to zip my pen. So that's why I said rostrum is always very important to me. Even now, even just now, I always look down with I'm in good shape. I'm in good shape, man. So that's uh, the reason why I stand behind the roster. Okay. I'm safe now. Okay, just to go to the subject matter of my presentation, much has been presented by Dr. Rock. I was the director general of Marty. Uh, I took some of the slides which I which I've had before. So some of the slides are repeating what Dr. Rock has presented and that makes my life easier. I'll be able to uh, finish conversation much earlier than the time allocated for me. Uh, okay, this has been presented by Dr. Roth. I will not elaborate much further, but we recognize the importance of climate change. It is a threat to the world today threat to Malaysia currently and in some parts of peninsula Malaysia the temperature has rise to almost 39 degrees Celsius. You are well aware of the melting ice of the Arctic and the Antarctic and pretty soon the low light areas will be flooded with water. And the polar bear, the polar bear is not being spread from the melting ice. And uh, this is an important slide to me because uh, it is a good relationship between the socio-economic trends. I think I have to move away from the roster. This is an important slide to me because uh, a very good relationship between the socio-economic trends uh, showing the increase in global population where there is increased demand for products from forestry, agriculture and fisheries. Uh, while meeting the demands of the increased population, it has been constrained by the environmental challenges mainly due to climate change. So with increase in population, with increase in the changing consumption pattern because it's in some parts of the world, the population is getting more affluent, increased instead of living, therefore there is increased demand for specific food like milk, meat and fruits and vegetables and increase in urbanization, more food for urban population, increase in economic growth would increase or result increase in demand for food, feed, fiber, energy, livelihood and ecosystem services. However, the demand, the increased demand for food is not always able to be met uh, due to the environmental challenges posed by climate change, which have an adverse effect on soil, land use water and biodiversity. So if you can address this, I think uh, we'll be able to shape some 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 uh, insight into how 
to come up with measures, either mitigation measures or education measures, to climate change. And uh, the climate variability has an adverse effect <coughs> on world food supply due to drought, global warming, and typhoon. And as presented by Dr. Roth, the climate change will bring about a longer dry season, drought, and land degradation, which has an adverse <coughs> effect on uh, the agricultural productivity. It also can result in shorter rain season, but with intense rain. Fewer typhoon much stronger, but I would like to impress upon you. Wait, yeah. Impress upon you <coughs> the emergence of new pests and diseases. This is very important under adverse climatic and temperature with water limited environment. There will be an incidence of the emergence of new pests and diseases, and this is the one that we are not well prepared, especially in terms of food production or agricultural productivity. And uh, it is evidently affecting the food security country and global. And as you know that uh, the population as recorded, the global population as recorded in 2006.7 billion, it is increasing to 9.2 billion by 2015. And as I mentioned to you earlier, the, the improvement in the wages of the capital, the increase in per capita consumption, the changes in lifestyle and diets tend to increase in demand for specific foods, besides staple food, rice, wheat, maize, but other food types, milk, meat, and fruits and vegetable fiber products, or fiber, fiber based products. And uh, for Malaysia, it is affecting our food security in terms of availability, accessibility, and safety. And uh, currently, the growth rate for Malaysia is around. 2.4% per annum, and the current population is slightly more than 28 million, with per capita consumption, consumption in Malaysia as recorded in 2012 at 1,700 ringgit. But uh, there is always increased demand for food, and we are facing with insufficient natural resources, land, water, to feed the growing population, to produce food for the growing population. And uh, we have gone through this financial crisis in 2008, shortage of food and upsurge in <coughs> the price of food. And uh, the, the upsurging of prices fluctuated between 50 to 200 percent. Now we go into the subject proper of my presentation, which is climate change and agriculture. And um, as pointed out by Dr. Roth, okay, that climate change has an adverse effect on the agricultural productivity resulted in increase in average temperature, change in rainfall amount and patterns, the rising of carbon dioxide is the greenhouse gases, the sea level rise resulting in the saltwater intrusion, uh, which is adversely affecting the low-lying areas, resulting in salt salinization and problem erosion, and also destruction of the ozone layer. Types of impact, and this is generally happening to crops being subjected to high temperature. Uh, when stress is subjected to plant, naturally or physiologically will respond to increased production of ethylene gas or endogenous ethylene. As you know, ethylene is senescent or initiate senescence or aging and resulting in cellular disruption, leaf yellowing, leaf drop, and eventually total loss. And uh, sterility is also reduced. Uh, sorry, increasing sterility means to say re reduction in productivity of the, uh, what you call, of the plant. And pollinators are badly affected by high temperatures. We know that pollinators are beneficial insects, which helps to uh, pollinate and enhance food set. Increase in evaporative <coughs> transpiration for plants and soil, as well as increased water requirement by the plant, while lowering water availability. You can see the soil moisture is very much reduced, which is not able, which is not able to meet the requirement of the crop. 
And uh, on the livestock industry, it uh, high temperature has its adverse effect in terms of the rate of body gain, which is very much affected. The feed use efficiency, the milk production is also affected. So are fertility and bearing capacity. So there is increased mortality due to high temperature because of the heat exhaustion. So and as well as increased problems related to res respiratory and also increase in cardiovascular diseases. So at the high temperature, it's common that the cattle or sheep will have less resistance to pests and diseases. And this is shown by Dr. Roth. The quality of the feed being packed to the animals are also reduced because the pasture, the grasses are grown under harsh conditions. Therefore, it will lack certain nutrients which are important for the animals. The ecosystem is very much affected. You can see that uh, the effect of high temperature, effect of limited water, will result in changes in the distribution of the plant species, as well as the ecosystem boundaries and biomass. And it also results in changes of the phenology of the biotic and abiotic processes. And Therefore, it will cause changes in the structure of plant communities under stress condition, and this will also tend to enhance the emergence of new pests and diseases, which will adversely affect the plant species. It has been reported that an increase of one to three degrees uh, in temperature would result in the reduction of biodiversity by 20 to 30 percent. And uh, rice, as mentioned by Dr. Uh, Dr. Rob, so it's very much affected. Rice is our staple food. And studies conducted by Marty demonstrated that an increase of one degree Celsius above the average will result in 10% yield reduction. And high night temperature <coughs> and force reduction in carbohydrate reserves and lead to increase in empty grade or chalky grade. When they're empty and or chalky grain, it will result in increased broken rice when it starts to build. And this is the scenario from our paddy field, which is subject to drought due to El Nino. It's completely dry. Uh, studies conducted by Monty as well during El Nino years and non El Nino years of the period of 1988 to 1999 demonstrated that the mean heat loss for non alino years is in the region of 5.65%. It's basically post-harvest losses of bed. But during alino years, the loss has increased to 6.5%, which is an increment of 1.5% due to alino. And this is quite significant to rice. In rubber, as mentioned by Dr. Rob, it will affect the growth performance of the rubber tree, the reduction in latex in terms of quantity and quality, and it has been demonstrated that uh, increase in uh, the alino effect has resulted in 25% reduction in latex here. The Department of Fishery has reported the following observations whereby high temperature results in increase of the water temperature as well as reduction in pH causing it to be acidic, uh, reduce oxygen availability as well as reduce the feed, the nutrient of the factor. So it is quite disastrous to the fish industry. The high temperature will also result in reduction in oxygen solubility in the water. And additionally, high temperature will also favor the multiplication of and survival of specific of uh, 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 bacteria and parasites which are harmful to the fish. Therefore, in total, <coughs> high temperature will tend to reduce the percentage of captured fish. This, you see, the fishing pond, which is almost completely dry, and this has resulted in adverse effect to our fish industry. So these are some adaptation measures 
which I would like to share with you and some of the centre by Dr. Rock, which is to develop plant varieties which are tolerant or resistant to high temperature, either through conventional breeding or through bio-technology agriculture, the Z-Maka is the selection animal. And uh, production system using less water. Uh, example, the aerobic rice production system, which I will present you shortly. And efficient use of water and nutrient. And normally, uh, water is the crucial factor under high temperature. Therefore, during uh, well, for agronomic practices, it is always advisable to use high amount of organic matter. Because organic matter will not only enhance soil fertility, but help to maintain moisture for a longer period. And also to develop plant varieties which are tolerant for resistant to pests and diseases. Again, through professional breeding or through biotechnological approaches. The integrated pest management and biocontrol method for pest and disease control is very important so as to reduce the use of chemicals. So it's, as mentioned by Dr. Rock, chemicals will add pollutant to the environment. So it is, it is, it is recommended to use more bio-based products. So I'm selling this because I'm with a biofertilizer company. So I think, uh, as pointed out by Dr. Jean, nothing much, much better than bio-based products. And as mentioned by Dr. Rock, the early, the early warning system for pests and diseases. So we need to be aware of the emergence of pests and diseases before it eventually causes total destruction to the crops. For crop management, we have short maturing variety of rice, and Mardi has come out with 100 days rice, which can be harvested within 100 days. MR211, which is less risky to what is best. And uh, development of drought resistant varieties and using less water, which is, which is termed as aerobic rice production system. Here you see rice is grown under non flooded condition using opaque sprinkler, where water is supplied during critical stages of paddy or rice growth and development. And uh, under this planting condition, water saving is about 50%. And uh, yield is quite comparable to flooded rice. But it is important. One problem is very important is weed control. Okay, that there must be a good process to control weed using aerobic rice production system. And okay, develop, these are some of the, uh, the adaptation <coughs> Develop rice varieties which are resistant to heat and drought and resistant against the major pests and diseases such as stem borer, sheep line, fungal virus, and plant hopper. You see some of the varieties which we have developed which can withstand drought condition. Uh, as you see here, some of the rice are still survive under drought condition of low water available. Some varieties which are higher link also presented by Dr. Rock, such as MR09, which includes the high yielding rice, which is able to achieve more than 10 tons per hectare. But the other adaptation measures is to improve the soil management by giving or by implementing economic and cultural practices which increase soil water storage capacity using organic compost to enhance water storage or to enhance the water water holding capacity. Reduce soil evaporation by promoting early growth of the crop canopy. And uh, thirdly to increase soil organic matter derived from organic waste. We have a lot of agro waste from uh, the oil palm waste, from the paddy waste and many more agro waste which can be used as ground cover. And to develop and use new cultivars of paddy with deep rooting system to reach water underneath. So, additionally, irrigation management is very important. We have a lot of regular areas whereby the irrigation, the canals are not well maintained and not well managed. And the importance of irrigation management is to optimize.
optimize water use efficiency at the drought condition and to improve the irrigation tanks so that the distant granary area uh, can be reached. Uh, and some of the physical infra infrastructures in terms of adaptation measures are enlarging the reservoir capacity to hold more water to promote quite spread use of groundwater, especially in areas where you can, we can source groundwater, uh, provide buffer zone in agriculture and forestry industries to minimize erosion and sedimentation, as well as changing the land use practices which will favor towards rough or high temperature conditions. So this has been covered by Dr. Roth, we share the same slide. Research focus. These are some of the research focus which I think is essential to be addressed in order to overcome the negative effect of climate change on agricultural productivity. First, the effect of extreme temperature and rainfall on crop, fishery, and livestock productivity. Although it has been done, but more need to be done in this area. Developing appropriate environmental friendly put the environmental friendly mitigation and adaptation measures. Development of new cultivars and animal breeds is more resistant or tolerant to extreme weather uh, and major pest diseases. Develop precision farming technology where I will spend more time on this shortly. And to develop early warning systems to detect climate change and the emergence of new pests and diseases. So this is an important tool in breeding, which is molecular marker assisted selection mass, mass technology, which essentially uses utilizing molecular markers. So molecular marker technology to accelerate and to improve the efficiency of animal and plant breeding. So through marker assisted selection, able to develop new breeds over a shorter period of time and we will be able to complement the conventional breeding, develop better animal breeds to come up with higher yield crops, crops which are more resistant to pest diseases and enhance the quality of the crop. Precision farming, which I mentioned to you, which I spent more time before in my presentation, it is essential. It has to be done because patient farming will enable you to identify, provide surveillance, and monitoring of crop performance. Uh, it also enables us to utilize or to be able to use the inputs, fertilizer, etc. or water precisely based on the actual need of the plant and the surrounding areas. So through precision farming, uh, such as using satellite imaging, the image can be used to <coughs> at least monitor what is happening on the ground in terms of whether the crops are suffering from nutrient deficiency or the crops are suffering from pest diseases or the crops are suffering from water stress. So through image techniques we will be able to identify <coughs> and to address the problem rather than to do blanket wastefully. So one of the methods is using satellite imaging, but this is not restricted by ground cover. The other way is to use unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV or drone, which is for crop monitoring and surveillance. And the unmanned aerial vehicle is normally fitted with digital camera and have a coverage of 4,000 hectares per day is able to tell the condition of the crop underneath very fast and be able to identify the problem and then uh, uh, introduce appropriate measures to address the problems. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <coughs> evidently the climate change as a result of high temperature, low water availability has a drastic effect on the agriculture sector, on the 
productivity of crops, livestock, fishing, and therefore adequate adaptation measures as well as mitigation measures are needed to reduce this adverse effect of uh, climate change on agriculture productivity. Yes, technology is important. It has to be enhanced further. More technology needs to be generated so as to address the, the, the adverse effects of climate change on agriculture productivity. Thank you for your attention.